Story of Franklin's Lost Expedition. In 1845, two ships, HMS Terra and HMS Erebus, set out from England in quest of the Northwest Passage, a critical sea route connecting the Atlantic and Pacific seas. Captain Sir John Franklin, a seasoned polar explorer who had previously led two prior expeditions for the Northwest Passage, led the mission. His final expedition to the Arctic, however, would end in catastrophe. Both ships were destroyed and all 129 men on board died. It is the biggest calamity in British polar exploration history. Several missions were launched in search of Terra and Erebus. Many of the artifacts recovered during these trips are currently housed in the National Maritime Museum, standing as remnants of John Franklin's ill-fated voyage. But what truly happened to the Terra and Erebus crew? New evidence from shipwrecks recovered in 2014 and 2016 has provided new insight, and novels, TV shows, and archaeological expeditions have all attempted to shed light on the crew's dying moments. Wait until the end of the video to learn more about the true history of Terra and Erebus ships, as well as what the items left behind can reveal about the crew that never went home. HMS Erebus and HMS Terra travelled from Britain to what is now Nunavut in northern Canada in May 1845. Explorations of the Arctic shoreline had raised hopes that the final section of the Northwest Passage, which connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, was now within reach. Explorer John Franklin, who had previously made two unsuccessful attempts to locate it, was eager to take the reward. The Erebus and Terra were strong and luxurious by prior standards, with heating systems and enormous quantities of stored meals. A whaler spotted the two ships in late July in Baffin Bay, waiting for ice to clear in Lancaster Sound so they could begin their trek to the Bering Strait. It was the final time the 129 crew members were seen alive. After two years of not hearing from Franklin's mission, the Admiralty dispatched a search party, but without result. There were 39 trips conducted to the Arctic, but it wasn't until the 1850s that evidence of what happened to the men started to emerge. The specific circumstances of their deaths are still unknown. The crew on board Franklin's ships encountered harsh conditions, in extreme cold, simply removing a balaclava might pull the skin and beard from the chin. As a result, the crews did their best to prepare. Claire Warrior, the curator, pieced together the experiences of Franklin's men. This is his statement about the situation at that time. The short answer is that we have no idea what their life was really like. We still don't have any of the journals or logbooks that would have been kept on the ship. However, we have a wealth of data from various sources concerning what the guys may have gone through. Using this, we can get as near to comprehending what the crews of Erebus and Terra saw and felt as possible. Expeditions started out in the spring to cover as much ground as possible before the winter. The Arctic might be a realm of chilling fog and raging seas, and expedition personnel were occasionally at the mercy of sea tremendous ice pressure and icebergs' unpredictable behavior. It was also breathtakingly gorgeous at moments, with sparkling colors and shimmering skies. Franklin's ship was caught in the ice in a lonely and desolate place known as the Back of Beyond, by Inuit. 
they couldn't rely on locals for meat, clothing, or oil, as previous expeditions had. They had enough provisions for nearly three years, and British expeditions had overwintering experience in the Arctic, says by Claire Warrior. Temperatures outside could plunge to minus 48 Celsius overnight and minus 35 Celsius throughout the day. Previous voyagers described officers hanging around in their great coats below decks in frigid temps. Thus conditions on board ship were not necessarily much warmer. However, Franklin's ships were outfitted with a heating system, which may have made life a little easier. Every week, the men were probably scrutinized for indications of scurvy. Sorghums were an early indicator, but scurvy can also cause previous wounds to reopen, teeth to loosen, and the skin to bruise readily. To prevent it, expeditions were given lemon or lime juice, but it was a recurring issue on Arctic missions due to a lack of fresh fruit and vegetables. Inuit consumed their meat uncooked, ensuring adequate vitamin C intake. Making magnetic and meteorological observations would have been an important aspect of the expedition's scientific mission, but the men had to proceed with caution. Placing cold metal tools up to the eye may harm or even remove the skin, and the men had to hold their breath to prevent condensation from collecting on the glass pieces. Pulling sledges may also be problematic if the men ventured beyond the ship. Even though the outside temperature is minus 50 Celsius, you sweat profusely. When you stop, the sweat can freeze in your clothes. Frostbite can blister fingers, causing extremely delicate skin, and toe injury is common. As the tissue freezes, the skin gets extremely cold and painful before turning red, then numb and pallid. If the blood flow is interrupted, gangrene can develop, the tissue is dead. If this occurs, amputation may be required. Sores might develop when, for example, ice collects beneath the chin following a runny nose. In extreme cold, Removing a balaclava can pull the skin and beard from the chin. In these kinds of temperatures, hypothermia should always be avoided. It is very crucial not to become wet. People will shiver uncontrollably, become sleepy and slur their speech, experience amnesia and confusion, and their pulse rate will slow. They may then pass out. In the beginning, the ships were loaded with cattle, sheep, pigs, and chickens to be eaten. The three creatures aboard the Erebus were a monkey sent to the ship by Lady Franklin, an elderly Newfoundland dog named Neptune, and a cat. The monkey was an interesting but annoying thief. Neptune was well liked by the crew, and the cat was required to capture rats. While the marines and officers had their own accommodations, the crew did not have assigned sleeping quarters. Their hammocks were hung from the deck beams in the open region ahead of the main mast. Tobacco was provided to the ships in the amount of 7,088 pounds to be chewed or smoked in pipes. Midwinter temperatures would drop below minus 40 degrees causing the mercury in thermometers to freeze. The ship had been equipped with 2,700 pounds of candles to keep the passengers warm throughout the long, dark winter months. Franklin's two naval vessels sailed along the Wellington Channel before heading south to Beachy Island for the winter. They sailed south along Peel Sound in the spring but was stranded by ice flow down the McClintock Channel off the northernmost tip of King William Island. 
A team from the expedition traveled across the ice to Point Victory on shore in the spring of 1847 and left a written record of their travels. They are thought to have reached Cape Herschel on the island's south coast, completing the uncharted portion of the Northwest Passage. In June of that year, Sir John Franklin died. Erebus and Terra drifted south, still stranded in the ice, until Captain Crozier ordered their abandonment in April 1848. Weakened by malnutrition and illness, the 105 men who survived set out towards the Great Fish River. Most died on the march along King William Island's west shore. The only piece of paper that disclosed anything about what transpired was unearthed in 1859. It is commonly referred to as the Victory Point Note. A handwritten remark in the margins of this standard admiralty form stated that the ships had been abandoned on the 22nd of April 1848, after being caught in the ice since the 12th of September 1846. Captain F.R.M. Crozier and 105 officers and men had set out on foot for the Back River or Back's Fish River, as it was then known. The message certified John Franklin's death on June 11, 1847. Two years after the Franklin expedition's last communication, the first of a succession of trips was organized to find them more to uncover what had happened to Erebus and Terra. The death of British hero Sir John Franklin captivated the public imagination. Over 30 search missions traveled to the Arctic between 1847 and 1880 in the hopes of discovering the fate of the expedition. Traces of Franklin's first winter camp on Beachy Island were discovered in 1850, but his whereabouts and fate remained unknown. As public worry mounted, the Admiralty launched missions both overland and by water, prompted by Franklin's widow Lady Jane Franklin, Parliament, and even the British press. However, no information about the crew's fate was available by 1850. Following widespread criticism, the British government offered a substantial reward of £20,000 to any parties who could provide information. Over the next 30 years, news and antiques such as tin cans, ski goggles and cutlery made their way back to Britain. These objects told the story of what had happened. The deaths of the entire crew due to a combination of conditions such as scurvy and malnutrition. Dr. John Ray returned in 1854 with Inuit legends that the expedition had perished somewhere west of the Back River. Many carcasses were mangled and body pieces were discovered in cooking pots, indicating that some of the men had resorted to cannibalism. As part of the 1845 to 1848 Franklin Party Forensic Anthropology Project, forensic anthropologist Dr. Owen Beatty returned to the fate of the crew in 1981, more than 100 years after the last search expedition returned home. Relics and human bones were collected from King William Island sites that had previously been neglected by searchers. The human remains were examined using current forensic procedures in an attempt to determine what caused the crew's demise and to identify whose crew members' remains had been discovered. Bitty's investigation discovered that the level of lead in some of the men's bones was exponentially high, leading to the notion that lead poisoning was one of the factors contributing to the expedition's demise. BT and a specialized team eventually excavated and autopsied three astonishingly well-preserved crewmen who perished and were buried during the expedition's first winter in the Arctic. 
Tissue analysis from the men's bodies confirmed Bitty's earlier claim that lead poisoning was one of the elements that led to the expedition's demise. Bitty also suspected that the expedition's tinned food, which had been lauded as cutting-edge technology and was plentiful, had been tainted by lead solder used to seal the tins and was the most likely culprit. The remains of HMS Erebus and Terra were ultimately located in 2014 and 2016, offering new insight on the much-debated fate of Franklin's final mission. Further dives by Parks Canada underwater archaeologists in partnership with the Inuit Heritage Trust have found even more remarkable findings.